more on this, let's bring in Mary C. Curtis, columnist at Roll Call and host of Equal Time podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, the two candidates are at odds over their first head-to-head -head debate, uh, with each in favour of a different broadcast and date, as we know. So talk a little bit about how important this next debate is and how partisan some of these networks are that, that host these debates. Well, it's interesting because uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign had not agreed on anything. Uh, there was supposed to be a debate between when it was Joe Biden and uh, President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump on ABC, and that had been agreed upon. But now he has a different candidate. And so, of course, he's trying to change the game and make the rules, basically having it on Fox in front of a live audience with two Fox commentators as the questioners. So, in a sense, he's asking her to come to a Trump rally uh, because it is his safe space. So, we'll see what happens because she uh, had been calling him pretty much the campaign, are you afraid to debate me? Uh, and he is basically saying that ABC is too partisan. And he very strategically went after the ABC reporter who questioned him this past Wednesday at the National Association of Black Journalists Conference, where I am in Chicago. And this is a real reflection of how different this election now is. You know, just in two weeks' time, huge amounts of support for the Harris campaign, over 300, well over 300 million, rather, raised for her, her campaign. Tell us a bit about... Um, you know, how it looks ahead. Is this just a honeymoon period for Kamala Harris? And how important will her, her VP pick be? It's hard to make predictions. Just think, just a little over a month ago was a debate between President Biden and Donald Trump that changed it all. And who knows what can happen in the next uh, three months to come. So that's, it's really basically hard to predict. But she does have a lot of enthusiasm. A lot, I think, will depend on who the, uh, she picks for the vice presidential candidate uh, as to run with her. She's looking for a good partner. And she's also looking, I think, to expand the electoral map, because the electoral college is how America picks its presidents, not the popular vote, as we have seen. And she might get popular votes, but it just strategically comes down to a few states. Uh, and yes, she gets a chance to reintroduce herself to the American people and also at the upcoming Democratic convention. And it was interesting that she and Joe Biden were partners in coming up with this incredible prisoner release deal with Russia. And that mm -hmm. kind of bolsters her foreign policy bona fides because she was a big part of that. And mm -hmm. yeah, and Trump is trying to get the headlines as well because you know he's someone that likes to make news yeah. and he has not been in the headlines. And of course, he's had a bit of difficulty, you know, pivoting his attacks, or, or the Trump campaign has had had issue with pivoting their attacks from Biden to Harris. What do you think the Trump team should be doing to position themselves against the increasingly popular Democratic candidate, which is, of course, Harris? Well, I am not a political consultant, but even the Speaker of the House, the Republican Mike Johnson, has actually said, "Please stop going after Harris on." her personal issues on identity, on race, on gender, stick to policy. And we have seen the Republicans fumble that, and even uh, former President Trump going after questioning her identity uh, in a multiracial society, questioning how she identifies herself. So basically, I would say stick to policy. The rest, uh, they're distractions. And it kind of reminds people of the kind of attacks that Trump has launched in the past on people like former President Obama. Marcy C. Curtis, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.